Hello and welcome to my video. Now, um, this is, uh, I'm going to do two little paintings here. I've got one piece of board here. As you can see, there's no way I can get in the way because the only thing that will be in the way is my hand. So it's a lot better than my shoulder. I have a board which is um, 80 centimetres by 60 centimetres and I divided it into two. So I'm going to do two small paintings and they are uh, 50 centimetres wide by 30 centimetres deep and I'll put that dimension in inches on the screen in a moment. Um, they're going to be little exercises in perspective and simplicity because uh, I want people to try and do things that uh, give them encouragement in their painting, if, especially if you're a, a beginner and you, you don't really want any nasty experiences to put you off. This is this is sort of designed to keep it nice and um, nice and approachable and simple. And don't worry, that's the main thing. Don't worry about a thing. Okay, so you, th there's a pencil line. I'm sure you can probably see it. And uh, all it is is just going to be a sort of um, I don't know dusk with a sky so let's just put some marks down and see what we get first let's just do this let's just do something like this and just see what happens because you never really know do you, you never know uh, I might uh, I want to point something out here I'm not believe me trying to sound like Bob Ross uh, my voice has not been uh, wonderful today and it sounds like I'm putting on a sort of gravelly, slightly um, voice-overy voice. And believe me, this is not quite my normal voice. Okay, so I'm just um, going to make these marks and see what happens, really. That's the base of my painting there, that line. That's the extreme right edge. Uh, I'm not going to go any further than that. And um, when they're finished, I'll probably cut them out and uh, frame them don't know yet we'll see I don't usually frame things I'm 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 quite into framing uh, a picture if I find a nice antique frame somewhere but um, until I find one it stays unframed or if I sell a painting I'll advise the buyer on the type of frame that might suit the uh, color scheme I might do a, a water, uh, some water meandering off in the distance there. Let's see. Let's just get just a few sort of basics down. There's a little bit of land. And you notice here that I've got, I've got these light areas. That's just where there's no paint. And, uh, but I can, I can make them look more rivery in a minute when I uh, add some white using a palette knife, which I will probably do. And uh, this painting, this first painting, is going to be more tonalist. And the second one, which will be painted on the board further down here, you'll see that later, uh, is going to have a little bit more colour to it. So this one, um, this is the, I really enjoy tonalism, as you may know. Um, tonalism is fascinating because you can do things like this. You can paint, start painting something. And then you can do a bit of wiping. Still going to leave. Well, actually, maybe I'm not. No, let's not make any firm set rules. I'm going to put some some tone up here, and um, a little bit more red, I think, in the sky. There's the top edge, like so. This sort of. Uh, freedom. If you can get the hang of this, it will change your paintings dramatically because um, it takes away the fear of mistakes. So I've got this, uh, I mean, it, I know it's sludge at the moment. Anyway, I want to, I want to sort of get some light into it. And you may think, well, that's obviously gone a bit, uh, a bit haywire, but uh, it hasn't. So I'm going to start putting Again, some shapes along here, like so. Dead simple, really simple painting. 
using the, roughly the rule, rule of thirds. I'm below halfway here with the horizon. Uh, of course, I can change the horizon any time I want, purely by using a piece of paper. Before I get into too much down here, I'm going to try and make something of the sky. So I'm just going to sort of push it around. You might have noticed this the lump of green floating in the sky here. It doesn't really matter. Everything's um, everything is fixable. So yeah, a bit of green in the sky. Doesn't matter. It's a toneless painting. Anyway, it, it'd be interesting um, on your thoughts about colours in skies. Uh, in case you don't know, I'm, I live in France. And this morning, today, which is Saturday, the, the, the 6th of February, my goodness, already, um, the sky everywhere, when I look out the window, is yellow. I've noticed on Facebook today a few comments about from people the other side of France, over towards Germany, saying, what's happened to the sky? It's yellow. I think it's usually something going on in the Sahara Desert that causes the dust to travel across Europe. Okay. There we are. Quite effective. I think you have to agree that uh, that's a very quick way to paint something. Before I go on though, I think I need to do something with my lighting. I think that's better. I, I hope it's not too dark for you. Uh, if it does seem a bit dark, I'll just um, fiddle with it in my editor to see if I can brighten it up a little bit. So the sky, what I've done here, I've got a dark line at the moment, and I'll probably darken it a bit more in a few places, where my horizon is going to be. Um, and I'm going to use, if I add more paint like this, or like you know, there's a bunch of trees there, possibly, maybe. Um, I can use the, the fact that I've got paint there with the colour that I will add to the horizon to bring them together to give it more perspective. Um, if I don't have enough paint there, it'll be harder to do it. So this is really, anyway, as I said, this is really just a, a little quick thing just to show you how to get going. A little bit more wiping up here. The um, colours I'm using, I always usually start off by telling people what the colours are. Uh, this is just sap green and red ochre. Sometimes I add Payne's grey. Uh, I might in this, I don't know yet. That's, that's how loose I like to to keep my uh, paintings. Don't make any firm decisions at this stage on what I'm going to do in the painting. That way it means that I won't be contradicting myself all the time because I do, I do change my mind quite a lot. Um, the usual paper trick, this is, uh, as you know, kitchen towel. Um, to wipe away some of the colour. If I dig my nail in really hard, I can get a nice light streak across there. Um, and in fact, let's just put a few shapes just in front of that dark. You see, if you don't, if you if you want to show light in a painting, you have to have some dark. Um, you, let me just try and demonstrate that a little bit down here. So we've got this, we've got this great big expanse of field. I'm going to just bring the f uh, horizon line a bit closer to us just by increasing the size of these trees here. And also just make a, put a few marks on there to show that uh, something happens beyond those trees. Let's make these even bigger. Let's make them bigger. Brings it really 
close in. I think that's possibly even not big enough. Let's do something else. Down here I'm going to put a few contrasty shapes just to get the um, the land a bit more a bit more in our face I suppose. Let's have something growing there. And something here. Obviously you can see what's going to happen there. I'm working on the idea of a bit of water but also not just water but in a puddle. I want to sort of bring it in from the edge and maybe bring it over here a little bit and I'll be doing that with uh, white on a palette knife pretty well straight from the tube. There we are. I'm sort of uh, There's something that uh, you painters out there might have noticed that when you start painting doesn't matter how, how much experience you've got there are there are times when you think what, what am I going to do um, now, you know today I've got a bit of a something wrong with my uh, chest and it's affecting my um, affecting my voice a little bit and so I didn't really feel like painting but now that I am painting I really feel like painting. So, so if ever you get f the feeling that, well, I would paint today, but I just don't feel I can do it, you know, just try, um, just try forcing yourself, see what happens. The worst that can happen is that it'll be a, a bad painting, if there is such a thing. I look at it this way, there are, there are paintings that are really good, and there are paintings that look as though they could be worked on a bit. And um, a bad painting, well, I think every time you paint, you, you move further away from the idea of painting something bad. It's the same as anything. If you practice, uh, you, will, you will get better. Now, these, this wiping away stuff that I do here, it's for several reasons, for uh, several purposes. One is I like the immediacy of the um, effect, it's really quick. Um, and also when I want to put paint on there, if I decide to put another colour on that, it, it, I can work wet on wet because the amount of paint that's there will not disturb what I put on over the top. It will a little bit obviously, but not enough to worry about. So here, I want to get, I want to get some perspective in there this little bit here. So what I, I think I will actually get a bit of white paint. So here's, a, here's some white paint on my, one of my newer brushes, um, uh, which of course cost me nothing. And I'm just going to put a line across there and just sort of generally mess that up a bit. Now, what could that be? Could that be the sea in the distance? It's all up to you. This is your world that you're creating. Oh, of course, this is an imaginary landscape. There is nothing. There is nothing in front of me to paint. This is purely from my mind. So uh, if it's your world, you can do anything. So I could say, well, I'll leave that. That's a nice bit of sea, but I won't because I'm me. I'm slightly awkward like that. Um, I'm just going to push that up into the sky above it like so because I'm, I didn't, didn't want it to be water. What I want it to be is a bit of sky. So by blending the top edge of that, and I'll do more as we go up, it'll cease to be water and start to become distant landscape. Well, that's the theory anyway. Let's see how it goes. So there's my nice bit of white paint in there. Uh, oh, now that's interesting, you see. Now, can you actually see that? This line appeared here. Is it worth me zooming in? Maybe you can see it. If not, I'll, if, I, if it doesn't show on the video, I'll, I'll zoom it in digitally later. But there's a, a line. I could keep it. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Don't know. And, um, but while I'm here, I'm going to put a bit more white just up there. That could start to be the sky. You see, now, if I was... If I'd set out to paint something like this, chances are it might have looked a bit stiff and a bit sort of, I don't know, what's the word, contrived or 
depends on what sort of painter you are, I suppose. Um, but the fact that this is coming together uh, at its own pace, in other words, I'm just sort of pushing paint around without worrying at all, uh, because um, it's just the way I like to work. The good thing about this, of course, making a video like this, is that I'm standing here chattering away to myself. Well, I suppose to you, really, but if it goes wrong, you won't see this video. If it, if it, <laughs> if it goes right, you'll see it. And um, let's just put some, just put a little bit of white up there, like so. If you know me, you know that I like, mm, what's the word? Interesting. I like interesting skies. So, just chuck in a bit of white there, like so. I'll just show you um, quickly when I find it. Um, just find my palette knife. So here we are, a palette knife. Twinkling in the light of my studio. What I'm going to do is get some white on it from my, one of my very expensive palettes here. So titanium white. That's all it is, straight from the tube. And I always use a palette knife the same way, and that is I stack, I'm sure everyone does this, I stack the paint on one edge. So it's, as I turn it around that way to work, it's the top edge here that has the paint, like so. And I want to get a quick effect in there of a bit of water. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to touch it on here. Oh, the thing about water. Don't forget, water is horizontal. It can be curved at the top, but it won't go uphill and it won't go downhill. Okay, so try and concentrate on keeping your uh, the top of the line of your water basically horizontal. If you don't, it won't look right. So let's start with something there, and then I think. A line through here and then I think it could double back. Don't know about that yet, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I see I tend to say that a lot sometimes. But anyway, let's let's see what would happen if we decided to take a bit more water over there. I don't know, I might I might keep it. I mean it'd be topical at the moment, there's quite a lot of flooding around. Okay, so how's that looking? It could, it could be okay. It'll be better when I put some trees in front of it. But I want to keep it simple too. Simplicity is very, very important. Um, if I put, let me just see what I can do. I'll try and make this, what I'm trying to say, clearer. Let's get a more definite line. Don't like that there at all. So if you don't like it, what you do is you, you cover it up and you put something in front of it, like so, and make it more interesting. In fact, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to put some foliage over that bit of water there, because it'll, there's this thing in painting and drawing, when you're drawing something, um, this is from when I used to be in college. So we'd be, uh, was it, I think it was one day a week. I think it was Thursdays, funny enough. Uh, the day would be spent drawing nudes. Could either be female or male. Um, but there's this thing about undrawn detail where you're drawing a, a limb of a person and you would say, supposing there's a leg coming across here and there's a knee and the knee goes and the leg goes down here and the thigh is up there. You draw the important bits that show where there are changes of angle. Sometimes you could draw the knee and then nothing between there and the thigh. It would just be for the mind to make its own image. And um, 
after a while you get you get to know where and how to do this and when to do it when not to do it as well when it won't work so it's the same with painting you can you can paint things but not completely so you let the eye figure out what is going on in this area here and in fact this area there's no you see because i haven't i haven't spent as you know you're sitting there watching i hope you have, i haven't spent hours fiddling with this trying to make it look real all i'm doing is the absolute minimum and if you do the minimum on a painting you can give the appearance of the maximum yeah, I think I should write that down. That's quite good. Well, it doesn't work in everything, everything in life, obviously, but um, in painting, it's very important not to overdo. Just state what you've got to state, and then move on. So, you see, I noticed there, right? So there's not a lot of paint on the brush. It looks like there is, but the, there's not really. When I touch it here, nothing is happening. It doesn't do anything to it. So I'm in danger of going dab, 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 many more dabs to try and get something to happen. It won't work. What you have to do is give the brush a wipe because it's got a little bit too much light to paint on it and then pick up a little bit of dark and then put that on. Oops, I've got a few rogue hairs there. Let's get rid of those. So a little bit, just a touch, and then move the hand away, and then you can leave the dark bits on there uh, without mudding it. We don't want mudding. Now, the bottom edge of this light area here, I think it probably needs something in there. So I'm going to put a little bit more red in that. Um, you, you may see it on the brush, I'm not sure, but there's more red here than there is on the other side. So I'm just going to put a few bits in there. Um, just to sort of give that bottom edge of the light uh, a slightly uh, more contrasty line. And I think I'm just going to put some there as well. On the actual painting, you'll see more red than you will on the video, perhaps. We'll see later, because I'll, I'll do a zoom in for you. Um, I think I'll just say a couple of quick thank yous um, before I get on to the next painting, which will be very soon. The first thing is uh, thanks to all the people who subscribe. Please hit the subscribe button if you like what I'm doing. I've just gone um, past 100,000 subscribers. And in fact, I'm at 100,000. Uh, uh, did I get another thousand on top of that? It could be 101,000. I think it might be, yeah. Uh, so thank you to everyone who's done that. It makes a big difference. It's the difference between eating and not eating. Oh, it's actually, it's not quite that bad. <laughs> it, does, it does help because obviously paint costs money. I don't go out of my way actually to sell paintings. I'm, uh, if people want to buy them, fine, that's okay, it doesn't worry me if they don't. I'm, I'm much more interested in this aspect, uh, the teaching. I get uh, a lot of satisfaction out of it, and not just because I'm painting, but because of the, the messages I get from people who say suddenly that after uh, what seems like a, well, a lifetime in some cases, they say, suddenly I, I, I see the light, I know exactly what I need to do to paint a picture and uh, it's um, I think it's because there's several factors here one is that I continually talk some people tell me to shut up but I won't I will not be silenced um, because it, if you're watching this to learn how to paint it may be useful to you to know what it is I'm thinking when I'm painting what's actually going through my mind um, also, um, what was the other thing? Um, yes, what I was saying, yeah, if people want to buy my paintings, that's all well and good. I, I seriously, and I'm not just saying this, I seriously don't really mind if, if people don't buy them. It's, uh, it 
because I, I do make money from YouTube, obviously. So um, I'd like to say thank you anyway if you have subscribed or if you're just on the edge of your seat now, hovering over that subscribe button. Just go for it. You never know. It may change your life. Of course, you may think this is the most disgusting thing you've ever seen. It's OK. We all have different tastes. I'm, I'm thinking now, before I go on too much further, that I should get a little bit of texture in some of these, these distant trees here. I quite like the sort of marshy land down there. Um, I think that's OK. This is very contrasty here against the sky. So I think it may be that uh, I need to add more white behind the trees to explain that contrast. It's the same thing, you know, if you have a piece of, uh, piece of white paper and the light's reflecting off it, it looks white. If you put the light behind it, it looks black. Uh, and that's because of the way our eyes perceive light. So I'm thinking I've got some light there. We've got this sort of slightly dreamy looking bit of green haze there which I'll work on a bit more in a minute. But I think I think it needs, it definitely needs some more white in here. By the way, I don't always use my, um, my, my fingers for putting white paint on. I'm just uh, doing it to um, show off, I suppose. No, just to show you that uh, you don't need a brush. You can, you can paint with your fingers just, you know, it's just to get the paint from the palette onto there. And it's quite a quick way of getting it over there. And it's amazing how there's the nice silky look you can get on clouds by using your hands. Of course, some people only do this; they don't uh, they don't use brushes at all, which is fine. Whatever floats your boat, as they say. Okay, so I'm just coming down here with a little bit more light above the trees, just there, and I almost touch the green, but not much. I don't want to contaminate the white too much. I don't mind a bit of overspill. Um, but on, in this case, I'm trying to do this to show you a way of keeping your painting clean. If you do accidentally touch the green, it doesn't matter, just wipe it off. Start again. I don't mean the whole thing, just that area. Um, if you do, when you do start painting, if you do uh, find that your, your picture is very muddy uh, and you can't do anything with it, get some of this, give it hell, just wipe the heck out of it, but wipe in a few streaks of light and sort of ups and downs and then step back and look at it and you may find that you've, um, you've actually got a, uh, a painting hiding in the mess because they are in there, just got just to extract them. If you know, if you know the statue of um, David by uh, Michelangelo, he always, um, it's an amazing statue. He, um, he used to say that he, he would get the piece of marble or stone and um, look at it and contemplate uh, on this piece of stone until he could see the figure inside it that was trying to get out. And I think it's a, it's a similar thing with um, painting. You can actually make a mess and then look at the mess and find something in it. See that? See how effective that is for clouds there? And the interesting thing is, and a lot of people don't see this, they, they actually criticise me because my skies aren't sort of blue with white fluffy clouds. They say, well, you know, I've never seen a sky that colour. I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again, well, you, you know, if that's your take on uh, skies, you really do need to get out more because skies can be any colour. So that's sort of interesting, I quite like that. I may sound surprised, uh, because I am, I surprise myself sometimes, because I like, I like the fact that things appear that you're not necessarily going after. You see, now putting that little bit of light there tends to tell the brain that, that whatever's below it is land. Just a touch, just enough to show, I'm going to just strengthen it a bit though, due to the fact that this is a video. Uh, make it a bit more clear. See there, right there, a bit more just above it, like so. If I've got a bit of light cloud there, chances are it won't work unless I have a bit the other side. As soon as I put a bit the other side, you'll be more aware of the sky 
going behind the tree. You see how, I haven't done the top yet, but you see how this bit of light here connects behind with this bit of light. And I'll just make it a bit more obvious by upping a little bit there. Putting a few tiny bits above the tree and then up away from the tree. So by doing that it keeps it in control and I haven't smeared the green into the sky. So I could I possibly could leave that, I don't know, well, I might do some smoothing uh, up here, a little bit more, a little bit more wipery up there, I might just leave it brown, I quite like that. Definitely, I'm definitely influenced by um, what's outside the window. I'm going to leave this edge ragged all the way around, you may be able to see that. I quite like that look, uh, you know, if I cut the board out it may look quite nice. If, if it looks like rubbish I'll just saw it and um, tidy it up. So we're almost there on the first painting. I'm just going to pull a little bit of this tone down to the trees there, so they're almost touching. Not quite. I like, I quite, now there's several ways of doing this. I could bring the whites right down really carefully so that it just it's just touching the, the top edge of the trees. As soon as I think it's going to smear too much just wipe my finger so there's another bit of clean brush there. Push that into there, clean my finger, pull a bit more down, again keep cleaning your hand, pull that into there, again another quick wipe. Now what I'm, what I'm building up to doing here in a minute um, oh, oh yes, the other thing. Normally, uh, if you know my work, you'll know that I'd usually get a big brush on that and smooth it all out. But I'm not going to on this. What I'm going to do, uh, having got the, the white down to the um, trees, I'm just going to use the corner of this brush uh, and just gently push some of the tree into the white in a few places. So, for a bit of interesting effect, I'm going to do the same with the trees in, this, in between that point and that point. So, and as I, as I do this, what, what I'm certainly doing, trying to avoid, is repetition of shapes. I don't want to do bobbly tree, bobbly tree, bobbly tree. Trees may do that in nature, it's quite rare, but... Um, if you paint it, it will look as though you've just got into the habit of repeating the shape of a tree. And um, it doesn't look good. Right, I'm just going round that one there. I'm letting some of the white run into the tree a little bit more there, so it looks as though the, um, the light is showing through the tree. A little bit more strong colour just in there. and a few bits touching the sky. Across the end here, I don't know, I think it probably needs a little bit more, a little bit more contrast in there, a few little, a few little marks. And then I think some distant, some distant uh, trees, really, I mean, this is a big brush com compared to the size of the painting, you have to, submit, that's a big brush to paint a painting, right. So, um, rather than use a little tiny brush, which I might if I was when it was dry and I wanted to add a few little sparkly things, I might do that. But for this I can get away with just the corner because it's only the it's only the few bristles on the end of that that I'm using. So over here I'm just going to touch that. Uh, you'll see that I'll do some close ups. I'll just touch that a few times in the distant uh, stuff, whatever you want to call that, um, just for a bit of uh, mysterious texture and uh, you'll see it later when I as I said when I zoom in um, I'm gonna put a little something just there just to sort of uh, there's something I quite like doing I'll, sh I'll, do, I'll exaggerate it a bit so I'm gonna put the tree hanging over like so 
and this is something that's uh, quite effective. I want to darken the top bit. Just check, double checking that I'm out of the way. Just add a little bit more paint to the top. Not a lot. There we are. And then um, I'm just going to give my hands a quick wipe. And I'm going to get one of my um, small brushes, which is a rigger you might have seen in my last video and if you didn't see my last video why not anyway there's a there's the rigger it looks sort of um like a sort of clumsy fluffy long brush when the paint's on it it goes into a a wonderful point so i'm going to use a little bit of extra um uh, i'm using liquid by the way i'm not using linseed oil on this one again i've got a ton of liquid to get through there is the point of the brush so all i'm going to do is just add a tree trunk and in fact i am going to zoom in a bit let me just see if i can just go in a tiny bit okay so here just there There we are. Put one there. Like so. So there's a little tree just on the end of that line of trees. The other thing I'm going to do is a few trees poking up above the other trees. Um, now they can be trees with no, no um, leaves on them and um, just uh, just the, the odd line just coming up like so now that one i'm tempted to put something on the top of that uh, just for the hell of it really just a tiny bit of green just up there just uh, And that one next to it, I think. A little bit more below it. Yeah, why not? Okay, now the other thing. Before I move on to the next painting. Is a few pale coloured tree trunks in there. And again, if you saw my last video, you know exactly how I did that. Piece of paper. Screw it into a really tight, um, well, I call it a taper, but I don't know what you'd call it. And really tight so that it's, it's almost reconstituted back into a twig, really tight. You don't want that being too fluffy. Okay, and all I'm going to do is just a few upward lines, like so, just to show a little bit of light catching a few trees in the foreground, just there. Might do another one or two over there. Let's do a few there as well, I think. When this is dry, of course, you can paint over these thin, pale lines. If you feel so inclined, you may, you know, it may be a, the painting will look fine without that. Um, it, the, the, one of the things about painting is, as I said earlier, don't go too far. Say what you've got to say. And of course, there's this saying I always like, and that is, um, when everyone else around you is shouting, whisper, and then the people will be quiet to hear what you're saying. I'm going to just add a few. I don't know what they are. I, I, you know, I call them somethings. There's a few somethings there. And I think we'd definitely have to have something over there. How could I miss that? There we go. So there we are. Lots of nice texture and what have you. And um, 
yeah, it makes a, a reasonable little quick painting. It's, as I said at the beginning, it's, this is all, you know, just to get you going and to um, encourage you to take a few chances. And of course, when this is dry, um, all I've got to do is paint over it with um, a glaze. I could add any colour over this um, at another time. If you're interested in glazing, there are some... Uh, I've done a few videos on that, so if you have a rummage through my page, you'll find them. Um, and there we are. That's the first one. So we'll go on to the next one now. See you in a moment. Okay, so here we go. Painting number two. Um, I'm going to start this one a little bit differently. I'm going to use blue. This is royal blue and phalo blue. And I've also got Japanese red. Now, a lot of people, as usual, I keep hearing this, they can't get Japanese red. Don't worry if you can't get it, just get red. Something like vermilion would probably do. Um, it's quite close to vermilion, but you can use any red. It doesn't have to be exactly the same one that I use. If you do want to get this particular red, you need to go to Jackson's of London, Jackson's Art Supplies. I'll put a link below. And you can buy it online there. It's made by uh, Le Franc and Bourgeois, so I'll give you all that info. So off we go. Let's see what happens with this one. This is going to be a sort of moody, um, I suppose it could be the evening, I don't know. Let's just get straight into it. Nice bit of blue. One of my favourite colours, if not possibly my favourite. Particularly this particular, there, get your words out. Particularly this particular this blue this is this royal blue is such a nice blue it's almost edible don't do it though don't go eating it not because i said so you don't listen to me it just has that uh, that look about it that um could make one think this is so delicious anyway there we go i rest my case that's basically Royal blue. Some people call it blue Rex. All kinds of names, but it's royal blue. And um, I've now got it all over my hands, but never mind. I'll just want to give myself a quick wipe down. I get through lots of this paper. Now, somebody asked me, what do I do with all this paper? Well, it goes into recycling. Apparently, now I could be wrong, um, paper that has paint on it can be recycled. Now, I don't know how they'd go about doing that. Um, of course, I could be completely wrong. Maybe they can't. But I'm sure I read it somewhere. Anyway, uh, if, it's, if it's paper that's covered in linseed oil, I um, get it out of the house at the end of the day because uh, of spontaneous combustion. I don't want spontaneous combustion. Now, here we go. I'm going to do like a distant landscape. There's going to be some light through there. That's why I've left that area uh, with not a lot of paint on it. So I'm going to get some white paint into that quite quickly. Um, I don't want to drag this one out too much, but there is going to be my main hot spot. There. That's where the uh, sun, I guess, sun going down. Could be that. Could be sun coming up. Depends on your your point of view. Lots and lots of white in there. And then a quick push across. Flatten it out a bit. It's all very well having bumpy paint, but um, you don't want paint that's so bumpy, my personal opinion. You don't want paint that's so bumpy that it casts shadows on its peaks, if you see what I mean can be okay, I suppose, but uh, it's just not for me, so I just put a light through there and um, some white over on the edge there. That'll fade away, ultimately. How am I doing for keeping out of the way? Not bad. Okay, so there's some white. Doesn't need to be fussed. Keep it simple. 
keep it simple, keep it quick. Now I'm just looking around the room to find a large brush. It's amazing how much paint you can get on your hands. I always used to um, pride myself in that I could paint a picture and hardly get any paint on me. The older I get, the more I don't care. Okay. So, there's a nice, well, biggish. It's not the biggest brush I've got, but it's big enough for this painting. That's a 10 centimeter or 100 millimeter brush. Uh, mostly bristle, a little bit of nylon in there, but mostly bristle. And um, all I'm going to do with this is just that. A couple of times. It's all I want to do at the moment. A little bit of brush, a um, little bit of brush, a little bit of paint on the brush, or a little bit of brush with some paint on it. And just going to leave that like that, keep it simple. Next thing I'm going to do is exactly the same brush that I used at the beginning. I'm going to just add a bit of this red to it. Just enough to make it interesting. I'm suffering from um, flying hairs today. They're getting everywhere. Okay. So, let's have a little bit of something across there. A little bit down there. That'll represent the land. This is, a, this is the sort of painting that anyone can do quite quickly actually. It's very simple. It's all done in bands, going back and forth, back and forth. It's how you use those bands, I guess, that makes it interesting. You don't want dead straight lines. Uh, you just don't get it in nature. You, you, need some, um, you need some bumpy bits. And I'll be using green down here as well. For now though, all I'm doing is making shapes. So it's really the same colour of the sky. It's just got a few additives. In fact, I'm going to add something else too. I'm just going to have a quick rummage around the studio and I'll come back in a second. Okay, I'm going to change the um, colour of the clouds just a little bit. I've decided to add a little bit of um, ultramarine blue. This is a blue that always... Um, whoops. The, uh, it's a blue that contains red. It's a reddish blue. It's the only way I can sort of pin that one down. But I'm just going to add a little bit in the sky. These are obviously um, stratos. Is it stratos? Let me know what sort of cloud this is. I, I, haven't, been, um, I haven't looked it up or anything, but I think they're stratos. I'm just going to put a few little bits in the sky like so and then I think without adding any more red I'm going to just change the skyline a little bit here I want to pull these together a little bit more subtly so it's just a sort of I suppose this is a a mood a very simple mood painting it's a good way to get into painting, this sort of thing, because there's, there's really absolutely um, no drawing involved. Nothing, nothing heavy, anyway. All you're doing is going back and forth. Think of it like a, like a printing uh, head in your desktop printer. All it does is go chicka 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 back and forth. And then as you work down the picture, you add extra features. So I'm going to do some sh dark shapes, um, first of all with a bit of blue, and then later uh, I'll probably add a bit of green to it. So all I want to do 
unless of course I change my mind again and I'll just leave it as shades of blue absolutely no reason why not so I could do something like this or you could do something like this I'll tell you something if I can do it you can do it there we are just took out a little floor in the sky um, by floor I don't mean the, that floor I mean a, a mistake okay so I think I want to put a bit of dark cloud across the actual Sun this could be interesting so I'm just going to put a few touches and then a bit of dark cloud here push it round until it looks good sometimes it'll work sometimes it won't Just trying to get a little bit more definition in there and maybe a little bit more um, don't know what I'm trying to say a bit more of the illusion of detail Incidentally, uh, talking of the illusion of detail, that's my video I put up, um, I think it's two years ago now. And it's, um, it's well over two million views. So if you want to go and have a look at that, it'll give you an idea of what I mean about um, the illusion of detail. Of course, it could be that you're watching this um, because uh, you've already seen it. In which case, if you have, thank you. Um, definitely seems to be popular okay so there's a sort of um, slightly Blue Ridge Mountains type view which I have to say I have seen a few years ago now it's almost eight years ago um, I was in North Carolina And I saw the Blue Ridge Mountains, not Virginia, but of North Carolina. So I suppose it's got a, a little bit of that look to it. Actually, the bottom of the picture is there. I've gone down a bit too far, but it um, doesn't matter. Okay, so this one is going to be a lot quicker than the other painting. And I'm going to do something at the top there, I think a few things I want to do and I'm also going to add some distant highlight type things in the um, in the sort of mist over here and I'll do that as usual with a palette knife so but before I do that I want to get a little bit of white at the top of the painting and this time uh, of course I'll try and keep it on the painting and off my hands I, mean, I, just, I want some I want some light in there not much just a little bit just to make that look a little bit a um, little bit of a variance across here rather than it just being one flat blue so I'll just put some white there a lot of this will get lost this white here because blue is a very powerful color and um, it's going to lose it a little bit but that's maybe all I need to do there again back to this big brush And just a few sweeps that way as well right then you may notice a slight irritation in my voice how did that painting jump from that to this so quickly well I will tell you you know when you video a painting it's always important to switch this thing on if you don't switch it on you miss a lot of the painting so okay as you are here to see how I arrived at this there's only one thing for me to do and um, and that is to delete 
what do you see there? Which I'm going to do, um, because you're here to see how I did it, not how I done it, if you see what I mean. So let's remove this. Trust me, this, it, when you've been doing this a long time, this is not a problem. You just have to take, your, take it in hand and do it. So anyway, I've done this a long time, as I said, and um, if I have to delete something, then I have to delete it. So there we go. It's not a great problem, he said, trying not to break down in front of you. OK, so there we are. We've turned it into another painting, so you could either leave it like that if you want to. I particularly uh, don't want to at the moment. Um, so I'm going to just recreate some of what you missed. And still trying to get paint off my hands. So I'm going to take some of this ultramarine blue here and I'm going to start putting in some shapes. This happened to me before a few, uh, a few weeks. No, oh, it must be a few months ago now. I painted a, an entire painting and totally forgot to um, switch the camera on. So uh, you never saw that one. It's probably lying around here somewhere with a boot mark on it, possibly. Anyway, easy come, easy go. You can always do it again. So all I'm doing in here now is I'm just putting in a few dark shapes. Nothing much. One of the bits that you did miss um, is that I wiped across here with a piece of paper, which I'm going to do again. And um, just to sort of enhance it a little bit, all I did, I went across there. That's where this light piece has come from here and I'm going to put it back a little bit stronger just take a bit more paint off in other words just to bring it out a little bit more I quite like that because it it sort of leads you up to that point um, we have mountains and everything but what I want to do is add some little twinkly bits in there and um, which could be distant water or lights from somewhere I tidy up to um, entirely up to you how you see it. So palette knife and just some white paint and uh, to get those that effect before all I did was I added a few lines. Now I'm going to keep this horizontal as possible. Um, I'm sorry about all the cat hair on my shoulder uh, a little earlier. It's one of the problems of having a, an affectionate cat. So there we are. Now that could be anything. You see, that could be um, could be a lake in the distance. And by breaking the line up, this is the undrawn detail thing I was telling you about earlier with the life drawing. You don't have to have a line that goes all the way across. Now if if there was a lake with no trees between you and the lake, then fine, just do a line. Personally, I find it much more interesting when it twinkles. In other words, you have a nice little high spot there and then there, but there's a break. So the eye connects the two. It tells the brain that there may be something between there and you, blocking out your view of whatever that light source is and um, you can do that all the way along so don't don't space it so that it's all uh, the same all the way along that'll look a little bit um, a little bit too contrived and maybe you could leave these here quite pale and just have a bright spot there like so that's quite eye-catching it's slightly different from uh, the way the painting was a few minutes ago but uh, it's still okay. It's got some nice, nice things going on in there. And I think I'll, while I've got the palette knife, I'm going to do a little bit of work on the um, sky. I think I might have a bit more white there. Like so. 
so just a little touch in the sky. It could be where the sun is behind a cloud and um, glinting on the water below. Of course, it will glint in several places. Uh, if I have, if I decide that this is definitely the high spot for the light there. And in fact, I'm going to enhance that even more. So I'm going to put a lump of almost pure white just there. And hopefully keep it clean. Very light touch. Don't want to push it into the blue that's that's around it. So I'm going to just touch the bottom edge a little bit there, just to right. Now, having done that, what I will do is I'll make the glint on the water directly underneath that approximately the same size. So I will I will just sort of. Strength. I've got that strong bit there, and I will just add a little bit more there, like so. So yeah, that's probably going to do it, I think. And um, what else do I need to do? Do I want to enhance the sky up here a bit more? It's very difficult for me um, to stop sometimes. I'd like to just get in there and sort of fiddle with the sky forever, but I'm not going to. Um, Going to be a good boy and stop. So there are some accidental things happening in there. You've got a little bit of light there with a dark bit in front, and you've got that happening across here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you see what I'm talking about. Hopefully you can see that. In fact, I'm going to angle the camera down slightly because it's better if I do it this way rather than zoom in uh, digitally. I can, uh, you can do all kinds of things on your video editor, but uh, it would be better if I actually just point the camera at it. Uh, I'll, I'll try not to make this too bumpy for you. Okay, so... And then I'm going to swing the camera slightly to the left. Now, what I'm going to try and show you here is these, these are accidental shapes. So here we've got a light bit and it's stopped by a dark piece here. The effect that that gives you is that this is a, the edge of a bank of trees in the mist somewhere and then you've got a light field across there and you've got a few little dark bits in front, which is another bit of land in front of that field. Um, and I could, I suppose, if I really wanted to, and I'll do it just for you. I wouldn't normally, I'd probably be quite happy with this normally, but I'm just going to enhance a little bit of that field with a piece of paper, like so. And um, I'm just going to put a bit of light there just a tiny amount very subtle so there you go that's a, this is a how to do a painting a quick and simple painting I, could, I, I, I can't resist it I've got to show you something else so I'm going to zoom back again so that we can see a bit of the foreground this camera has all kinds of nice smooth um, controls on it so that I can move this without it bumping around too much. And back a bit more, I think that should do it. So this field in the foreground, it's got some pale blue on it, which is acceptable. There is a plant that grows over here that's um, pretty well that colour. Um, so I, I'm not, I don't really care uh, whether I take it off or leave it on really but what I want to do is just show you something um, which might help
just the odd little touch on the ground because if you look at fields um, they do quite often have lines across them which could just be an old path so we could have something that has a hint of something coming across there and I think something above that would be quite nice so I'm going to just add a little bit of light catching the ground over there and what else you see I can go on forever like this I can just keep fiddling away but I'll tell you something I'm really glad about with this painting now is that the camera is still going it's a little bit disheartening when you paint a picture and then you find out that uh, you didn't record it so I think that's it now I'm going to stop there thank you for watching hope you've enjoyed it brush falls on the floor um, if you want to come to my uh, Skype lessons, which I'm running this year, because I don't think I will be having any uh, actual venues. Um, so if you, yeah, I'll put a link in the box below this video, if you're interested. Uh, I take about 25 students per lesson. The lesson goes on for um, an hour and a half, and it's a Q and A. So you get to, you get to see me paint a picture and then you can ask questions for the last um, 20 minutes or so um, and uh, yeah I've been uh, doing it on Skype I've had two I've run two lessons now there seem to be a lot of people interested anyway it's always a good thing I suppose um, I want I'd like to be able to do it on zoom however this camera that I'm using for some reason um, just it, it and zoom don't go together for some reason it compresses my picture so instead of seeing what you're seeing here now like this, in other words, this, this, this wide at the moment, it knocks 30% off the width and scrunches it all up. So until I can get that figured out, uh, the lesson will probably continue on uh, Skype. So anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.